All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me, man. We are going to be in Luke chapter 12 today, guys. So hope everybody out there is having a wonderful, wonderful day. Let me turn my camera a little bit. Let's see if that'll work. Guys, let's get into it. Let's do some prayer. My hair is crazy today. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I just want to I just want to ask you to continue to move through me, to continue to move through my life, Lord. Uh, I, I love the renewing that being born again offers, Lord. It's like we don't have to just fix the things that the world says were wrong with us or the world or the things that we thought were wrong with us. When we're born again, we get to be just that born again, brand new, a new creation from top to bottom. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that so deeply. Um, I ask Father God that you continue to allow these videos to hopefully reach out, touch someone, maybe pull someone new into God. You know, give those of us who are already in the Word, you know, a chance to dive even deeper, to become more, more in tune with you and what you have for us, God, and what your plans are for us and what your desires are for us and our wishes for us and our actions and, and for all the things that I don't know how to put into words, Lord. Lord, make a way. In your heavenly name we pray. Guys, God is so good. Let's get into Luke 12. All right, guys. <clears throat> In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops and i say to you my friends do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do but i will show you whom you should fear Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Also, I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him, the Son of Man, also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Y'all, I'm going back. I'm reading it again. This is Luke 12, verse 15. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. 
And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then, whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms, Provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, and you yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them set down to eat and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and be drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know 
yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Then he also said to the multitudes, whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Yes, and why, even of yourselves, do you not judge what is right? When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, make every effort along the way to settle with him lest he drag you to the judge, the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you shall not depart from there till you have paid the very last mite. All right, guys, amen, amen, amen. God is so good. He always has so much for us. So, so, so much for us. Oh, man, this is a beautiful chapter, guys. All right, so moving into chapter 12 of the Physician's Gospel, we have the Lord addressing his followers, touching heavily on three themes in this chapter. Number one, confession with courage. Or in other words, I don't care who hears me or what they think. The Lord alone is my God. All praise be to Yahweh and Yeshua. Number two, the correct outlook on possessions. And lastly, the Lord touches on faithful stewardship. All right, guys, 12.1. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Okay, guys, so this is a people who are so desperate at this point for what they have in their mind the Messiah to be. Here, the word innumerable, or in the original Greek, myrioi, myrioi, I believe is how you say that. That's the original Greek. And this is actually our source for the word myriad. Okay? And so that word, along with the word multitude, which in the original Hebrew meant tens of thousands, a term that was usually used not to necessarily describe that exact number, but a large and unruly crowd, so desperate for deliverance from their temporary troubles, i.e. the Roman oppressors, that this crowd even trampled some underfoot. All right, guys, 12, 2, and 3. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear and inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. All right, guys, so we as believers ought to take great comfort in this verse. God's truth is an undimmable light. We don't have to fight every battle. Rest assured, the victory is ours. Our task is to simply do our Heavenly Father's will, and in time, the desires and the wicked force that drives the hypocrites forward will be made known. 
Verse 3, let me read that one more time to you. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the inner ear and inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. Okay? So, verse 3 points to how all wrongs and evils will in time be broadcast to and for all. Inner rooms refers to the ancient practice where you got to realize these guys built houses out of mud bricks, right? And mud brick walls could easily be dug through, penetrated, and so storerooms for housing valuables were placed well away from any outer or exterior walls, placing them in the home's center, i.e. inner rooms. Even wickedness done and whispered in this tiny place will be broadcast to all in time. Nothing is done in secret. 12.5, guys. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Power to cast into hell. Father God alone, the supreme judge, has this capability. Here, the word translated as hell is Gehenna. The place of final judgment. The word Gehenna comes from the Hebrew Valley of Hinnom. This was a deep ravine just outside the southern wall of Jerusalem. It was a place. It was a place where, according to 2 Kings 23, verse 10, children had been sacrificed as, as living burnt offerings to the pagan god Molech. Also, this ravine had been disrespectfully heaped with corpses throughout the Babylonian siege that was the fulfillment of Israel's covenant curse. 12.7, guys. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. All right, guys. So, supremely beneficial. True reverential fear of God can free one from the crippling fear of the harm that others can cause us. This comes on the heels of the realization that God alone can inflict true and lasting destruction. And that same God values those sparrows and He values us infinitely more, guys. It says that when a sinner comes to salvation, when a sinner comes to the foot of the cross, that the multitudes of angels, beyond our, our, our ability to even comprehend the number of them, that amount of angels, they praise, they worship, they, they, they shout hallelujah over one of us coming to the foot of the cross, guys. That's our value to God. Don't ever lose sight of that. 12.10 And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. And I know that we have touched on this before, but it really is a point of contention and confusion for people because of the phrasing of it, this unpardonable sin, right? So let's, let's touch on it again for clarity's sake if you weren't around for the last time I did this. The unpardonable sin. To blaspheme the Holy Spirit is to credit Satan with obvious works of the Holy Spirit by way of Christ, despite irrefutable evidence. Deliberate rejection of divine truth is, to be clear, a decisive rejection of the one to bring the lost to repentance and faith. This type of defiant, purposeful sin makes forgiveness impossible or in other words the unforgivable or the unforgiving cannot be forgiven you can't you cannot refuse forgiveness for others while expecting forgiveness for yourself 1220 guys but god said to him fool this night your soul will be required of you then whose will those things be which you have provided 
Okay, by worldly standards and ideals, the farmer's plan to conserve this large harvest seems not only okay, but, I mean, even prudent, maybe wise, right? I mean, it's like what Joseph told the Pharaoh to do in Genesis 41. So that's what the world says. God says that this farmer is showing short-sighted folly. He's placing stock in the material. He has lost sight of God and one's accountability to him. God alone creates life. God alone sustains life. God alone imposes death. And God alone rightly casts the wicked into eternal judgment. 12, 22 through 34. So in my Bible, this is listed as seek the kingdom of God. That's what that's listed as in my Bible. I'm not going to reread that whole section, but basically what Jesus is saying here is don't worry, be happy. Quit stressing, and here's four reasons why. Number one, worrying about possessions is ridiculous. Life is far more important than what we fill it with. Number two, God always cares for his own birds, fish, frogs, us, etc. So quit stressing. Number three, your worry doesn't fix anything. Number four, we are heirs to God's divine kingdom. And so to focus on the earthly, the temporal, the temporary, it's pointless. It's silly and there's no fruit. All right, guys, 1244. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Worldly versus divine. God's kingdom is so different. We are such a new and different creation as born-again believers. We are rewarded for our faithful service with the chance to perform even higher service to our loving Creator God, guys. That's what's so beautiful about being born again. We are made totally new. If you had told me before that my reward for doing a whole bunch of really good work was the chance to do a whole bunch more, even harder work, I would have probably went thumbs down on that. I'll be honest. I probably would have said, mm, I'm good. But now, now I'm like, thank you, God. I love nothing more than to tell people about you and what you offer and what else do you need me to do? And that's what's beautiful about it because that that is not me. That is not humanity. That is the divine. That is the worthwhile. That is the righteous. That's piety. That's beautiful. Last one I'm going to share with you guys today. 12, 57 through 59. Yes, and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right? When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, make every effort along the way to settle with him. Lest he drag you to the judge, the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you shall not depart from there until you have paid the very last mite. Alright guys, so this is one that I can speak personal testimony to because, well, if you don't know me, I was a bad guy for a lot of years, did a whole lot of illegal things, went to court a lot of times, and so, take the deal is what I titled this one, because, legally speaking, one with a weak, if any, defense is wise to cop a plea bargain or an out-of-court deal before trial. As sinners, we need to be reconciled to Father God now, not later, not at trial date, now. You don't want to wait until your trial date. We want to be reconciled to Father God now. And that can only come by the Son and His precious blood. And if we wait, our trial and righteous judgment will come. And hell will be a certainty. We need to be right with Jesus beforehand, guys. So, get down on your knees and cop that plea bargain with the Lord, right? Alright guys, hey, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, and I promise God wants us to do it, man. So, let's do it together, guys, right? Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. Um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, drop those down here into the comments section, man. I love you so much. God loves you even more, man. Go out there and have a blessed day, y'all.